Hey guys, today's video will be talking about what the remnants of Agatha will be doing uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, heading into the Western Caribbean and towards Florida over the next couple of days. Uh, Agatha struck the um, eastern Pacific coast of Mexico just uh, yesterday and uh, became the strongest landfalling May hurricane in North America on record at a Category 2 strength of 105 miles per hour, and I believe its pressure was 974 millibars. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comment section. I think, though, it was 974 millibars. Um, now it's crossing Mexico. It has rapidly weakened. It's now a no longer even a depression, I don't think. Yeah, it's totally dissipated. Now, though, it is marked for potential development in the Atlantic and currently has a 30% chance of development within the next two days and a high 70% chance of development in the next five days. Uh, and the National Hurricane Center says a large and complex area of low pressure is expected to develop near the Yucatan Peninsula and the Northwestern Caribbean Sea in a couple of days, partially related to the remnants of Agatha from the Eastern Pacific. Despite strong upper level winds over the area, this system is likely to become a tropical depression while it moves northwest, uh, northeastward over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and southeastern Gulf of Mexico late Thursday or Friday. And regardless of development, locally heavy rainfall is likely across portions of southeastern Mexico. It's already ongoing. The system's already bringing tons of flooding rains, heavy flooding rains to southern Mexico. The Yucatan Peninsula, Guatemala, and Belize um, during the next couple of days, spreading across western Cuba, southern Florida, and the Florida Keys on Friday and Saturday. Interest in the Yucatan Pen Peninsula, western Cuba, the Florida Keys, and the Florida Peninsula should monitor the progress of this system. And here's the five-day graphical weather outlook, again showing that it's a high 70% chance of development within this zone from basically right around the Yucatan Peninsula up towards the northeast off of Cuba, the southern Gulf of Mexico, up into off the west coast of southwest coast of Florida and around the Keys. And uh, so let's look at what uh, it currently looks like and see it's very, very much totally disheveled, totally dissipated, just like a bunch of random showers and thunderstorms activity um, over Me southern Mexico. Um, and uh, though here is what the general model guidance is showing for the direction of the system where it's heading. It looks like it will generally head continue, uh, towards like the east and the north-northeast and northeast and uh, likely go pretty much straight over the Yucatan Peninsula, emerge into the southern Gulf of Mexico, and continue on a very, the models are really, really ac um, in agreement, fully in agreement, it's really good, and that they will likely continue to the northeast and cross central Florida um, along the west coast and uh, likely bring it'll be a very lopsided system there's a lot of shear a lot of um, strong wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico which will make the system very very lopsided and uh, um, very um, uh, eastern based with its precipitation so really um, the places that we'll see if the system's precipitation will um, mainly be um, central and southern Florida from like around, um, uh, was it D D is Daytona Beach, I think, there in the middle of the east coast of Florida and like um, Naples, Fort Myers, down to like Miami, West Palm Beach, uh, all those areas, the Keys, all of the Keys uh, will get a ton of flooding rain. Um, and then it'll move into the Atlantic. And some of the models, especially the European model, the European model seems to be the one that's um, fairly... Uh, I don't even want to show you what the GFS and GEPS ensembles are showing. Uh, I, 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 I'm just not going to show you because I don't know if you guys saw that, but like uh, they were so off, so wrong. But this is the intensity guidance. You can see between now and about uh, 72, 84 hours, it really will be below tropical storm status. But it looks like it could get towards tropical depression status or so towards 60 to 72 hours out from now. And then... Uh, like a couple of the models show it getting to trouble storm status <laughs> one model gets it all the way up to potentially weak category one hurricane status by the time we get towards 120 hours out from now um <laughs> but uh, uh that'll be really hard to we'll, we'll really have to see um it would have to put up a heck of a fight to really try and intensify that much um but uh i mean it seems like possibly once it emerges off of Florida and into the um, Atlantic Ocean off the southeast coast that might have the best chance of um, really trying to strengthen, but uh, we'll see.
Um, let's move to the Western Atlantic. I'll show you the GFS model first, and then I'll show you the European model and then the CMC model um, afterwards. So here's the GFS model. Here's all of the precipitation associated with the remnants of Agatha and the area of interest or investigation that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring for the Atlantic. Move this forward, and the GFS produces, and this is the... Um, 18z run and it again it shows it um, moving over the entire Yucatan Peninsula and then into the um, southern Gulf of Mexico and it looks it's gotten much more in line um, it seems like lately with the European and CMC models now um, so that's that's good and uh, it's a good thing finally they're all major models are getting into agreement um, and you can see the heaviest rain and it looks like the center moves over very southern Florida over Key West, especially it seems, and even potentially over Miami and uh, um, just maybe south or maybe right over Fort Myers and Naples. And then it'll move out into the Atlantic and the GFS tries to make it um, keep together and maybe strengthen a little bit more um, in, out in the open Atlantic offshore of the East Coast and then brings it north and out to see um but uh it, this is really the first gfs run i think it, uh, in a good while that it's finally starting to get into more of a, an agreement um with the european and canadian models now here's the european model and uh we'll bring this out you can see here's all that precipitation associated with the system brings it over the yucatan and then starts to move it over the southern gulf of mexico you can see it's a very broad system and again like i said because of the wind shear a lot of the pre pretty much all of the precipitation will be on its eastern side east of the center and will bring a lot of heavy rain it looks like the european models thinking to uh, much more widespread than the gfs across like um central southern florida even into portions of northern florida and then it'll move off actually let's compare this to the gfs model real quick it looks like, hmm, yeah, so it looks like, okay, it looks like it'll emerge off of the east coast of Florida by um, this Sunday on June 5th, um, uh, getting into, well, more overnight, I guess, overnight Saturday into Sunday, um, June 4th and 5th, uh, and then the European model shows it off of the um, southeast coast, and it shows it really trying to strengthen um, it gets it down into uh, around 988 millibars um, and even strengthens a little bit more as it's heading more out to sea. So that'll be very interesting. Again, it does seem like the best chance that it has of really intensifying is once it gets off, uh, it gets uh, past Florida, it gets off the east coast of Florida and into the um, Atlantic Ocean off the southeast coast. All right, uh, let's show you the Canadian model now. And let's bring this back to the beginning here. And here's the precipitation, the Canadian model, um, the Canadian model shows for the system. Brings it, to, again, to the northeast off the Yucatan Peninsula and into the southern Gulf. And then it shows it, again, kind of like the GFS, very consolidated or like a smaller system with the precipitation really solely for southern Florida, again, for the Keys, like Miami, Naples, Fort Myers. It merges off the, Atl uh, off the east coast of Florida and um, off the uh, southeast Atlantic coast. And... Uh, really shows that as a very broad system like barely held it holding together and uh, just continues to weaken it it seems as it heads out more into the atlantic and then breaks up as we get into next week um or like the early mid part of next week so this system again definitely got to watch it definitely could become our first named storm of the 2022 atlantic hurricane season or at least the tr first tropical depression um, the chances are high of that, of it at least becoming a tropical depression. I think we could squeeze out our first name storm out of this as well, which is Alex. Alex is the first name on the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season list. Um, and, uh, this will, but this will actually also mark that, uh, this is the first time in six seasons, um, that, uh, we will not have a preseason named storm prior to the official start of the season which is tomorrow june 1st june 1st tomorrow is the first official day of the 2022 atlantic hurricane season so that is it's, uh, it's, it's exciting we're officially getting into the hurricane season now guys and um we're starting it off with already though again kind of like we've had though the past like six seasons especially like the most recent like five since 2016 especially 2017 through last year where we just had um a lot of name systems around the very beginning of the hurricane season like just prior and the weeks prior 
So uh, we're starting off once again with a bang. We're already um, tracking our real first good chance of a tropical uh, cyclone formation in the Atlantic for this year's hurricane season. And uh, we'll likely at least get our first tropical depression out of this and perhaps our first name storm, Alex. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, moving into later this week and into the weekend um so uh people living in florida especially i'd say central and southern florida make sure you're prepared for the system i mean it will be a very sheared system but it will still bring heavy rain with it so make sure you're prepared for that for any potential flooding and it might still also bring again some strong gusty winds with it even if it's you know makes landfall it's only like a weak moderate tropical storm um, we'll still bring th with that some fairly strong winds, so make sure you're prepared for that. Um, and uh, though people living in Florida, especially South Florida, I'm sure you guys are prepared. You guys know what to do. Um, but in any case, make sure you do prepare yourself for this in the case of like you might flood or if the winds are strong enough, you could lose power. So maybe uh, try and get your um, generator prepared and ready. But uh, you guys know what to do, I'm sure. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, helpful. It's exciting. We're finally tracking our first true chance of a uh, tropical cyclone for the Atlantic this year for the hurricane season. First day, uh, first official day of the hurricane season is tomorrow, June 1st. And uh, I will try to cover as many of the tropical cyclones that form between now and the middle of August because I will be going off to college um, in the middle of August. So uh, I, don't, I, I don't know um, how much I'll be able to really continue uploading videos for you guys on here but um i can't wait to continue to upload video guys videos for you guys on here for the next few months before i go off to college and um really try to interact with you guys as much as i can so uh, again hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and consider liking the video down below comment down below uh what you guys think uh, will happen with this system how strong do you think it will get and what what do you think the likelihood of it becoming our first name storm is do you think it really will become our first name storm or do you think it will just end up becoming our first tropical depression of the season comment down below let's have a nice lively discussion down there and uh, subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already if you like this kind of content please consider subscribing because there will be plenty more of this heading into uh june and the um at least through uh august um and we'll see after that once i start college if i can upload more for you guys uh, anything for you guys um once i start college but uh again subscribe to my channel if you really like this kind of content because i will try to really put out as much um content for you guys for the covering the hurricane season as i can over the next couple of months so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this video consider subscribing liking the video commenting down below what you guys think will happen with this system and i'll see you guys in the next video bye